Uh, we've probably all got one of these sitting around somewhere. And we also probably have a dead spot somewhere in either the house or a piece of the property that you like to visit. For me, this is outside on the back deck and the weather is getting nicer. We had some days here in the 30 degrees Celsius range, which was uh, pretty mint. Although today, it may not look like that. So if you've got a couple of days that you can spend inside before the nice summer weather hits you, let's take this old clunker convert it into a Wi-Fi repeater and we'll fix that problem. So the next time it is nice outside and I'm on my deck, I don't have to worry about chilling out and losing connectivity. Now this doesn't work for every router, but if your router is in the list listed on uh, this website, DDWRT support dash rotor base, you can go uh, through the list and uh, take a look before you even bother digging it out of the box. If you uh, happen to know what that model number is for me, I mean, happen to know that this is a wrt 54 gl absolutely love this rotor back in the day uh it did me a solid for a long time but it's been in a box for i don't know probably five or six years if not longer optionally if you go to the website you can just type in that model number and it'll search it for you and there you can see my rotor is there once you have this you're going to need to download that firmware and get that locally on your hard drive. Then we're going to connect this thing to our computer to flash the firmware. Now, just a note of caution here. If you haven't flashed firmware before, you can risk wrecking a device doing this. So a word of caution there. I mean, if this thing's already in a junk drawer or just randomly, I had to go looking for mine. Chances are you don't care too much if it's going to be toast or not. Next, take the cable that goes into the router from your computer and just pop that into any one of the ports and then power up your old router. Next, you're going to want to connect to that router and uh, typically the address is 192.168.1.1 and if it asks you for a administration login, the default login is root and then the password is admin is the default. And if you forgot what the router password is, fret not, you can usually use a pen and there's a reset button on the back. Push that for 30 seconds. That usually gets these things back to like a factory default. It gives you a place to start. Now your firmware might look different than this, but somewhere in usually the administration tab, you're gonna find a firmware upgrade button. And what we'll do is just select that file that you downloaded, upgrade the firmware, and then reset that router. Now, once your router is reset, your screen will look somewhat like mine. Some of the settings might be different. We'll go through the settings and I'll show you how to configure that all. So to start out, go to the setup tab. Make sure that this is automatic configuration DHCP. Uh, this rotor name, you can change it if you want. Default is fine. Your local IP address for the router. This will need to be different than whatever your main router is that you're currently using. So if you're not sure, just change it to two or three. Typically the defaults for just about everybody, they'll default to 192.168.1.1. So we can swap that out. Your subnet mask is going to be 255.255.255.0. And then the gateway, this will go back to your main router IP address. Now, if you're not sure what this is, just go into any device that you connect to the internet on. And uh, you can go into the settings of that and see what the IP address is. It'll give you the first three numbers. And the last one is always going to be dot one for the gateway. The one port switch, we can leave that off. This should be DHCP server. We want to make sure that's enabled. And then once you've got that done, click on save. The next tab we're going to go to is the wireless tab. We're going to set this up as a repeater. This is going to be mixed and the name of your wireless or your current Wi-Fi should be up here. Now this is case sensitive. This does need to be exact because this is how the router is going to then connect to your wireless and then send the signal on from there. You'll see a button at the bottom then add virtual access point. We're going to add exactly the same name as your current Wi-Fi setup. This should be enabled, disabled and bridged. And you can add that. And once you your screen looks like that, with the only thing being different is your Wi-Fi name here, click on Save. Next off, we're going to go to Wireless Security. Now, this needs to be exactly what your wireless settings are that you connect to the Wi-Fi on. 
and then make it exactly the same on the bottom. Click on save and we're going to move on to one more, the security tab. Now for security here on the firewall, we want to uncheck every single one of these things here except for filter multicast and we want to disable and we're going to click on save. And while you're already here, just take a look under your administration tab. If you had a default password, it's a good time to change that to something stronger so that people aren't logging into your router and changing any settings. So with all those settings changed, head over to the administration tab and scroll all the way down, click on apply settings, and then reboot the router. You're going to lose internet connectivity, so don't panic here. It's going to reboot and everything should come back and all your options should be functioning. So the only thing left to do after that reboot is said and done. You can log back in if there's any other settings that you need to check or any troubleshooting that you need to do. But uh, for the most part, that should be everything that you need to get this thing up and running. Then just go to wherever that dead spot is or close to that dead spot. Take this rotor, plop it down. You don't need the cable in the back. It's just still connected to my, there we go still connected to my computer but uh, you just take plop this and you don't need any wires and this thing will extend your wi-fi and fill in that dead spot for you 